Hi and welcome back to another episode of our 3ds Max course. My name is Arnold Faller and today we're going to talk about materials. So we're going to create materials, apply them to objects, we're going to check out what kind of different textures go on to those materials and I'm also going to show you how to um, correctly place textures on the geometry. So there's different ways to influence how the texture is placed on the geometry and I'm also going to show you how to place different textures on one uh, piece of geometry. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is in Max here we are changing the render engine. Today we're going to use the simple scanline render engine. By using standard material it's much easier to get started and get used to the way 3ds Max works with materials. So um, go in here into render setup and choose the render engine up here. It says renderer and switch from the default Arnold here to scanline renderer. That means now all the materials are all available in scanline render. So let's uh, close it. And the next thing is we're going to create some simple objects. All we need is a plane. In top view, I'm going to create a plane. Then I'm also going to take a sphere when you create the sphere, uh, it is helpful when you click the button down here that says base to pivot because then the base of the sphere is uh, standing right here on my plane and another box, uh, not another box, and a box here in the foreground. So that is our uh, simple standard scene. So unfortunately the sphere has the same color as my plane so I'm quickly gonna change that to a blue sphere. Good, that is the object color only. Also, on my viewports, I'm turning the background grid off. That is the letter G on the keyboard. So, when we talk about materials, we need the so-called material editor. And the material editor is hidden in the shortcut M for material editor. So when you press M on your keyboard, you can see the so-called slate material editor. Uh, let's close everything here on the left side, side so it looks like mine right now. So I've closed all the things and I can see the top one are materials. So materials will be applied onto your objects. Maps are usually parts of materials. They can also be used as, as environments and so on. And then some other things and material libraries and sample slots and so on. We, we are at the beginning only using materials and maps. Then we have the standard windows uh, column, uh, the windows uh, commands up here. Then we have the view. This is where the, the, where, the, where the materials are getting created. So you put them together out of maps, out of uh, different influences, and then you apply it to something. And on the right side, you usually can see the parameters of a certain material, of a certain map. So this is how we start. And the first thing is we're going to create the so-called standard material for our object. And the first, so we go to materials and here we're going to pick the scanline rendering typical material. We open scanline and there is the standard material. The standard material already says legacy. That means it will be soon removed. So it's kind of old material, but we're going to use other types of material later on as well. But for right now, I'm going to prefer the standard material. So pull it out and drop it into your viewport. You can roll your mouse and zoom in and zoom out. And you, first of all, you can see you have all kinds of ingoing nodes on which you can connect something. So you can connect something to this material. And on the outgoing side, you have uh, the outgoing node, which also can be connected to something else. Um, when you double click the material, and right now it's only one material, you can see on the right side the parameters of the material. The first and most important is the name. The name has to be unique, so you can either name it after what material it represents, for example, concrete, wood, uh, stone, or, some, or something else, or you can name it after the object that you place it on, like uh, sidewalk, uh, handrail, and things like this, floor. So, but just make sure you have unique names. The most important, uh, let's take the material one, the first one that we have created and apply it to an object. Uh, I've seen many different methods. The best way to do is, is in the material editor, select your material, there's only one. Then in your uh, viewport, in any viewport, choose one or more objects on which you want to apply the material to. And then in the material editor, click the button up here that says assign material to selection. Now the uh, material has been assigned to uh, our plane. 
Uh, let's check out the parameters and the most important one for this material is the color because right now it only has a color. It's the diffuse color, so right next here to diffuse and when you click on this little uh, color icon you can choose any color. So let's go for, an, for a, a colorful orange and hit OK. In this simple shader you can see that the so-called ambient color and diffuse color are all the same. The specular color are the colors for the highlights. But as I mentioned, this is a very simple material, has no reflection and uh, also not uh, uh, very nice uh, refraction, so we not very nice transparencies. Um, but it's a very simple one. So um, it's applied to our ground plane here and uh, let's, uh, let's create another one and apply it to our sphere for example. Uh, so pull out another standard material, name is uh, just by default uh, next one. So double click it, make sure you have the right one open here on the right side. Change the color to, uh, I don't know, let's say a dark green, no, no, dark, uh, dark green something like this and select your sphere and hit apply to selection. Because when you apply it to your sphere, let me quickly uh, maximize my viewport here. When you apply it to a sphere, it's one parameter in the material that uh, can be seen a little bit better. So here's my sphere. Um, when you change the specular level, you can see that it suddenly creates a highlight and the highlight usually is a bright spot oriented towards the light. Right now we don't have a light so it's oriented towards us. It's just like as if we would have a light on our forehead or a flash on our camera. So the light comes from the direction that we look at it and the glossiness here and you can see there is the, uh, the graph shows you how this highlight looks like and when you make it, uh, when you increase the value for the glossiness then it looks a little bit more like a glossy object because the highlights are getting smaller. So the more, the more glossy, the more shiny an object is, the smaller the highlights are. So on the diffuse pearl uh, object it's a larger highlight and here it's a smaller. And of course you can increase the specular level as well. Okay, so that only works well on, on round object like the, like the sphere. Uh, and a third one for our box and let's just pull out another uh, another object you can place it wherever you want in your time you can place it next to each other on I usually do it on top of each other or I also make groups by the way you can also click uh, if you have lots of materials in your scene you can also use a second view here so you can uh, uh, create another view uh, so you can sort your materials uh, double click the material and change the color for this one uh, I'm going for a bluish purple one and apply it to your box. So select the box, select the material and hit assign to selection. Okay, so this is the way you assign materials to your object. So uh, another thing is now you can see all the materials have been used in the scene. What happens if you need, uh, if you by accident or not by accident even uh, on purpose, delete one of the materials. So let's say I delete, the, uh, select this material and hit delete on my keyboard. In my material editor it's now gone, but that doesn't mean it's gone out of the scene because you can see here in my, uh, in my viewport it is still orange, so it's still used in the scene. So not all materials from the scene are in the in the uh, material editor and also not all materials that you have in your material editor are are uh, assigned to an object. So you can keep different versions. For example, you have a floor and you have two, three different versions of your floor. You can keep all those versions and you only assign one to your actual floor in your 3D model. So how do I get my orange back? Uh, here is a button and uh, here's a, uh, this eyedrop tool and um, it's called pick material from objects. And when you click on this eyedrop tool and then on an object in your scene, it brings in your uh, material. Unfortunately, they are on top of each other, but that doesn't matter. So now they are all, all three materials are back. So that's the first way how to apply materials. So you can anytime get them. If you don't have any materials, so let's delete all three of them. There's also a button material, get all scene materials. And that will give you back all the materials in the scene. 
Uh, if you want to make sure that the, the, the objects don't get, uh, the materials don't get lost, you have to at least apply it to something. If it's not applied and you delete it, then it's gone. Good. Then um, we have created a, our standard material. We have uh, played a little bit with the, let's have a, a, a few more looks at the parameters and I'm going to check the green one. So I double click it. Here's my green. Um, so we checked out the specular highlight and the glossiness. One thing that you can do also here on the top side, uh, here's a wire parameter. The wire parameter will give you a wire object. Of course, all that also works when you render it, but it's enough to see it here in the viewport. Uh, wire, when you render it, you can see that it only renders the front side. It's not rendering the inside of the sphere. So you can only see what looks towards you. Uh, if you want to see the inside Two, then you have to click two-sided and then it's rendering both on the inside and on the outside. Um, you can remove that. If it's a smooth geometry like the sphere, here's a button then you can uh, turn it into a not smooth object but only upon render times you can see now every polygon of the sphere has now its own uh, brightness and that's why it looks like a crystal thing here. Uh, face map doesn't work right now. Um, so the next thing is when you have when you use wires. Little tip here: uh, when you have wire, and let me quickly um, let me quickly copy or clone my object. Uh, so where are we? So here's two. No, let's bring one uh, one sphere. Oh, sphere is really bad, hard to grab. So let's bring it all the way back in the perspective so looking from the top and there it is so I just wanted to bring it into a perspective so I'm in a perspective view and now as I have used wire on my material it would actually mean that the wire in the foreground is a little bit wider than it is in the background because with the distance it gets uh, getting smaller if you render it you will notice that it the wire is the same thickness because right now it's both it's all one pixel wide here and here so and if it has the same thickness and is further in the back it looks as if the wire is getting thicker and thicker so what you want to do is if you also the wire should lose its width over distance you uh, you choose wire and then you go down here under extended parameters and you can find here some parameters for the wire and when you change the units for the wires not into pixels which is the same thickness one pixel all the time but you change it to units then the wire will render in actual units and 0.1 is maybe a little too thick but let's do a uh, 1.0 is too thick so let's go for 0.5 and when I render it, you can see it is the same thickness now here and here. And in perspective, as it is further uh, away, it, uh, get, it's getting thinner. So that is uh, one thing. If you use the wire uh, model, then make sure you also go in here and check and change the wire to units and not uh, pixels. But I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to delete the second box here. Okay, so that is the most important things here. Let's uh, get started with actually using a picture as a material and I'm going to use it first on the plane so my plane is the top material see if you don't name it so let's just name it plane the material now I know which one it is and I'm going to show you how to use a material on my plane so the first thing is you need the picture that you want to uh, let's uh, let's move those two out of the way so here's my plane um, you need the picture here inside your um, material editor and the picture that we're going to use is a map and we open maps and we're going to use one from the uh, from the sorry from the general maps and the general bitmap and the bitmap stands for every picture that you want to place onto it so it doesn't matter if it's a jpeg a gif a png or whatever kind of image also a film can be placed onto your uh, as a material so you pull out a bitmap and place it next to the to the to the icon it right away asks you what kind of picture you want to use i have just taken a couple of them from 3ds max from the library and here is the bitmap uh, uh, by the way, th this little symbol, it used to work perfectly. As they have changed something that you get a little, little preview how the picture looks like, but they have changed something that it's, uh, 
Uh, it's not showing up anymore, so let's, we have to live with that. Uh, here's my picture, and what I'm going to do is I take the outgoing node and drag it, and you get a rubber band, and you drop it onto diffuse color. Diffuse color is the general texture, so you use the picture instead of the color. Remember, uh, here's the material. That was the color, diffuse color up here. And now, instead of using the diffuse color, I'm using the picture. You link it. By the way, this link can be selected and you can break it if you know no more, uh, if you want to link it no more. You can see now it's orange again. Or if I take it and link it again with diffuse color, the material shows up in my viewport. Let me zoom out a bit and you can see the picture of the bookshelf has been placed on my whole geometry. So it was a rectangular plane and it will be placed once on the whole plane. Uh, if I change the size of my geometry, so select the plane and go to modify. If I change the size of my plane, you can see that the texture texture actually act, you can see that the texture actually sticks to the to the geometry. But we don't want to do this. Okay, so that is the first way. The, 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 the texture always follows the size of the object. Um, if you double click the picture in here, you can see it's a picture, it's used as a texture, not as an environment like where we used the, the HDRI image in the previous lesson. Um, you can also, uh, when you are in texture, you can also use the offset, which basically means you are moving the picture. So that, let's just try it here. You can see if you use offset, it will be moved to one side and the new picture follows on the other side. And of course, when uh, U stands for X direction, and let's bring that back to zero, y, uh, V stands for Y direction. So if I change the offset here, it will be moved in this direction. That is one way to adjust the position of the image. For example, if you want more than one bookshelf, you can also use the tiling. If you do one into two, then actually there are two pictures used, not offset. Um, you have to then offset it. See, or also use two in the other direction, and this is how you can create a larger bookshelf with more books on it. But then you will see the red books, for example, they show up multiple times. Okay, so that is the offset, and together with the tiling, zero, oh, not zero, sorry, one, of course, the default value here is one, because you want to use the picture one time. And if you need to change the picture by itself, here is the path where you found it. So you click on it and change it for another picture. But I'm going to leave it as it is. By the way, here you can also view the image. How did the picture look like? Um, and you can also, if you want, crop something off. So you can crop it here and uh, then, it's use it, uh, then it's using when you go to reload, I guess. Oh, I did not use apply, sorry. Did not. So here's apply, and now it crops the image, and you can here uncrop it by bringing it back, and then it uses the whole image. Good, so that is how you place a texture on an object. Why does it know how to place it on a rectangle? Because it's an object that has been created in 3ds Max, so it knows right away how to place it on the geometry. That is the same way for the sphere and the same for the box as well. So uh, let's try to uh, put it on the box maybe. I have another picture there, so let's try the picture on the box. So here is the, um, here is the material for our box, the purple one. I pull out another bitmap. I'm going to choose the, uh, the windows here and I'm going to link the windows to the diffuse color and it will be applied right away. So also here on the box, it will be applied, of course, in a different form. It will be applied in the form of a box. So it knows that every side now gets the picture exactly one time. That means when I take the box and change its uh, size, select the box, go to modify. When I change its size, it will also stretch the texture because it always uses it one time on every side. If this is not what you want, if you want to adjust it by yourself, how many times the, uh, the picture is placed, then you have to do something else. And that is, you're going to apply a so-called UVW map modifier. But before we do this, uh, let's do another texture also for our sphere. And 
Uh, for the sphere, I'm not going to use a picture just like uh, any other picture from the library. I'm going to use a so-called procedural, uh, procedural map. That means it's a map that has been created in 3ds Max. So something like tiles, like a checkerboard, like some kind of noise and so on. So let's open up the material editor with M and bring the uh, material of the sphere. So here it is. And now instead of using a map, a general bitmap to pick any picture that you want to place. I'm trying some of the others or at least uh, one or two of the others and here's one that I'm going to use. It's called checker and checkerboard is a very simple black and white checkerboard and you pull it out. It says checker out of two colors and you link it to your diffuse color. If you look at the uh, at the at the sphere and you can see now it has been it got a black and white um, pattern on it. Uh, if you double click the checkerboard you can adjust its settings for example here is the two colors let's go for a uh, let's go for a green and uh, it's uh, in its, in its uh, complementary color would be then a yellow so here's a blue and yellow color also I don't want only blue and yellow one uh, or two by two two I also can use tiling for example I use uh, four by four that means two um, two by uh, uh, four that means actually now I have eight by eight uh, a pattern of eight by eight checkerboard uh, in on a, on a on a sphere like this I think it's better to use X in X direction a little bit more so let's do eight and four and now it looks like a a sphere with uh, like the globe with uh, with the uh, parameter uh, with the longitude and latitude okay so that is a procedural map let's get another one not a checker you can just go in here and select it and um, hit uh, delete so that cuts the, uh, the the connection of the two and uh, I'll bring in something else and that would be for example let's go for tiles if you go further down here's tiles tiles and you link it to your diffuse color tiles now creates uh, like simple tiles double click it and here is the uh, pattern of your tiles I know the tiles of the sphere look a little weird advanced control and here you can choose the uh, the tiles and the grout color and you can choose how many so let's make the grout smaller like 0 0.1 and the horizontal count let's do like 10 by um, 10 10 by 10 no maybe more 10 by 20 and there it is and also a little color variance that means not all the tiles have the same color so let's do 20 here and that creates a random uh, some random uh, tile um, onto your sphere. Okay, so that was the procedural map. Anytime you can just un unlink it and link go back to the old one if you prefer this one more. Good. That was a uh, how to place the material on it. The next uh, in the next phase, we're going to adjust how the picture is placed on the object. We're going to apply the UVW map modifier and check out its settings. I'm going to do it to the plane. So I'm going to select the plane and right now it already has a material applied to it so it knows how to apply it is called UV, uh, UV coordinates so it already has UV coordinates or here it says mapping coordinates. Uh, I'm going to give it a modifier so select it go to modify and here from the list uh, you pick the UVW it's all the way down RSTU and it's called UVW map not any other they all have UVW in the front so UVW map that is a modifier that allows you to give it a different form projection method of mapping and also adjust in various ways the way the picture is applied to the to the the texture is applied to the object. Um, right now it's it's planar because it's a plane and it knows planes usually get it from the top the material. Uh, a few things that you can adjust. The first thing is the size of the image. So here's the size and you can see 
it, it now allows you to change the size in which the picture is applied. Uh, what you see here, the orange frame with the line here that says this is the top of the image, it's called the gizmo. And this is the, let me uh, increase the width a little bit, it's a orange a frame that tells you where the picture is, even though you don't see it outside of your picture. It's called the gizmo. You can also, uh, up here where it says UVW map, you can open that and here it says gizmo. When you click on the gizmo, then it turns yellow from orange. And when it's yellow, then you can move it. So you can not only scale it, but you can also move it. So you can define what part of the picture will be placed on this, on the Rectangle. Of course, when the picture is uh, is uh, the end, when you reach the end of the picture, it repeats again, and there's a second picture coming in. So that is how you move it. You can not only move it, but you can also rotate it. So if you don't need want the picture to be like parallel to the edges, you can also move it like this. You could also move it the other direction, but that will distort the image a lot. So I'm only ro ro rotating it in the uh, in the C axis. Okay, so that is the size. Also, if you need the tiling, you can also tile it here. Let's do two by two. Oops, sorry, two by two. Why is there U, V, and W? Because that is when you place the box, you want to adjust all three directions of your texture. So that's why you have uh, three. Right now, I only have a plane, so it's, uh, it's only two of them are. The, uh, the next one is not doing anything. See, it's not changing anything, so let's leave it at one. Good, so that is when you have a plane, you can very simple, simply adjust it. Let me show you something else. If I adjust the mapping so that it's really recognizable, uh, like rotate it and it's tiled and so on, don't forget to get out of the gizmo again. And now I'll show you something else. Uh, I'm going to create another plane over here. And this plane, I'm also rotating the plane a little bit, so it's no, nobody says yes because it's parallel. Uh, of course, now you can also rotate this plane because the texture will stick to the plane, but here is my other one. And I would like to have the same material on it that is simple. The same material means I need the material editor, I need my plane to be selected, and I need the material, uh, not this one, sorry, it's... Um, one that's my plane so select the material and hit uh, apply now it has the same material but now I want the same mapping direction so I want the same direction in this one this one this is uh, important for example if you have a hardwood floor you have a hardwood floor in one room and you want exactly the same tiles the same size of wooden panels uh, also in the other room, so you want to uh, adjust it for one room and then you just uh, take your next room, this one, apply the same UVW map modifier, all the way down, UVW map modifier. And now you would have to find the same angle, the same size of texture, the same tiling, or you can just copy it from this one. Here's a button that's called acquire and you can acquire and then click on this one. So the question is, do you want to apply it relative or absolute? Relative means the same size and the same rotation angle, but uh, it will not match the other, uh, the other mapping. It will only have the same look over there. If it's absolute, then it's, it's really like it continues on to the other object. Let's try absolute because it's the most uh, common one, I guess. So when you choose absolute, you can see all the all this, the boards will uh, continue over here. You can probably see it a little bit better when I bring it closer. Let's bring it like over here and acquire it again. Acquire this one and absolute. And here you can see it just continues here, here and here. That is perfect if you have some tiles on the floor or something like this and it continues even into going into the other room. Uh, okay, so that is how you apply a planar um, UVW map modifier. Let's go back to this one and this is the box and when you uh, when you want to change the, the texture of the box you need to uh, also apply a UVW map modifier. UVW map. Only this time and you can see when you use planar it projects the uh, it projects the texture from the top down 
and this is not what you want because uh, these streaks that you can see here on the side of the box is basically the last row of pixel of your of your picture the last row of the pixels will be pulled down and that's why it has this weird form so what you want is for a box obviously you want a box projection and the box and when you click open this here and go to the gizmo uh, of course the box uh, usually will fit the the picture so let's uh, I'm gonna mess it up just move it around a little bit oh let's even rotate it and it's really messed up so here the texture is really messed up don't forget to get out of the gizmo again when you have messed up your texture here's always a reset button that you can reset it to how it was in the beginning that means it fits the box perfectly on all sides if you accidentally change the the size of it only then you can either reset it or you can also use for your box you can use fit in this case it's the same it will fit again to your box but uh, I'll show you when it's not the same so if you uh, when you resize your texture and then you click here on gizmo and rotate your texture and now you click fit uh, you click fit it fits in the rotated version and if you want to go back to the original settings you just have to reset it okay so that is over the box you can do the same thing you can tile it two by four by two for example uh, in this case it's also x and y uh, only sorry I didn't there's no change for the box here and so that is the tiling, the rotation of the... Uh, here's also some other uh, things that you can check out in the UVW map. If you, wanna, if you want to know more, there's uh, different ways. But for right now, I would say that the fit and the uh, reset and the acquire from another object is probably the most thing that you need. Uh, uh, if you go into the um, help file, uh, press F1, and you can get, of course, information of all the other functions of the UVW map modifier as well. So let's, um, let's try something else and that is uh, let's go back to the material editor because there's still a few things that we want to do on our, um, on our material and let's go to the plane and you probably saw that we not only have diffuse color maps we also have other things that we can, apply, uh, we can link to our material and I would like to show you two of them. The first one um, and therefore I'm removing the the I'm removing the, the the bookshelf so I'm just unlinking it so it now is back to the origin uh, to the orange because and also let me um, let me reset my UVW map because then it's uh, just one time on it um, what I would like to show you is the first thing is the bump map the bump map creates a bumpy a rough surface by creating the illusion of some height or depth it's only the illusion so it's not changing the actual geometry uh, as a bump map you usually use um, grayscale images so you use a bitmap place place it in here and i've you see there's a couple of grayscale images so here's one let's go for the uh, tire thread so here's the tire thread and you can see the black and the white so the the, 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 the gaps have the wi are white and the rubber things are black. And I take it and link it onto bump map. The thing is, uh, the bump map is not shown on the, in the viewport. It is only shown when you hit render. Then you can see the bump effect. So uh, now it looks like as if the black parts get pressed in. This is not, you cannot create a landscape or mountains out of it, but you can create the illusion of a rough surface, for example, with a brick wall, or I have also here some cobblestone, so we can do that. The bump map, uh, when you double click your material, here, double click, and you go down to the maps section, you can see that all those maps usually have 100%, only the bump map has only 30%. So you can also increase the effect that the bump map has on the on the geometry and uh, if you increase it then obviously and you render it again it looks like as if it's deeper 
pressed in. But be aware, don't go too far because at a certain point it will just look ugly. So uh, this is uh, not accidentally at 30%, but it's actually not percent, it's per mil because you could go up like really high. But when you do this, it will soon get uh, look ugly and it will look really uh, artificial and not very, not very nice. So let's keep this to uh, 50 or so. If you want to change the picture to another one, so double click your bitmap and then you can load a different image. So you, in this case, I'm going to show you the, uh, the dots that I have here. So the dots, they just create little bumps in the, in the, on the material, not really strong. Actually, it's not little bumps, but it's, uh, it's the black is pushed in. So the picture looks like this. So what it does, it pushes in the black parts and leave the white parts as they are. What you can do in the material, double click the material, you can also give it a negative bump. So you can try negative 100 that actually pushes in the white and leaves the black out. Or maybe the black is not pushed in, it's pulled out. Anyway, same result. Uh, see, it looks a little different now. It looks like a hole, uh, like, a, like in a golf ball or so. Okay, so that is the bump map. And you can all, not only uh, inverse the bumping, so minus, let's bring this to a positive value, which is uh, default, but you can also select the bitmap itself. And here under bitmap parameters, no, actually it's not under bitmap parameters, it's under output here. You can also invert the image and then it has the, it's an inverted image. And now it's the, actually the same effect as if you would go to a minus 100 or plus 100. Okay, so that is something that you can, you can do all kinds of stuff to the, to the picture here and the output and under the bitmap parameters. But that is what the, uh, what the bump map does. Let's quickly um, cut the connection between the bump map and the, the picture itself. And I'm going to show you the next uh, step and the next map here. And that is the opacity map. And the opacity map now, and that's used the same, uh, this is the black image with the white dots. Take the image and use it as an opacity map. And what it does, it turns the parts that are black on the opacity maps, turns them invisible. Um, you can, uh, you probably don't see anything here, but what if I take my box here and I'm going to move it underneath my, my plane, sorry. So here's my, the box is now underneath the plane. And, but as it has a transparency map, the black parts, which are black in the, in the opacity map, will turn the material transparent. And all I have are those yellow dots. So wherever it was black, it's uh, transparent, fully transparent. And of course, smoothly changing to fully opaque. If I uh, take the picture, and again, the opacity map, double click the material, is 100. In this case, you cannot go into the negative and also from 0 to 100. So if you want this picture to be inverted, you have to double click the picture. And down there in the output section, you can invert the picture. And now it's uh, the, now the dots are black and the dots are creating holes. Okay, so the transparency map, or in this case, it's called opacity map. The opacity map creates transparent materials wherever it's black. Okay, so that is enough for right now, the bump map, the opacity map, and the diffuse color map, of course. So the opacity map, you can use it for all kinds of, if you have a metal with holes in it, or if you have a a wire fence that is only made out of wires, then you can use the holes in between, make them black, and then you get a nice, uh, uh, you can see through it. Okay, so those are the bump map and the opacity map. The next thing that I would like to show you in the materials is um, the following. What if, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to stick to my uh, box here, uh, actually, I just take the box. Let's uh, select the plane. Maybe if we need it later on, right click and hide selection. This one I'm going to delete. Also the box, right click, hide selection, uh, the, the sphere. And here's my box back. I'm also removing the UVW map. So this is the original box as it was. What I would like to show you now is what if I want um, what if I want the material to be uh, 
on one side to be a little bit larger and on the other side a smaller image. You know when whenever there is a UVW map modifier it will always on one on the two sides that are facing each other it will be the same size. How can I make uh, adjust the adjust the UVW coordinate, W coordinates for every single plane? Therefore I'm even destroying the parameters of the box so that you, that nobody can say well that was already in the box. So here's my box. I do a right click and convert to editable mesh. It still is applied correctly. Why? Because the mapping coordinates are usually in the geometry. So if there is no UVW map modifier on it, it already has some mapping, uh, uh, some mapping information, some texture coordinates. And even now when it's an editable mesh, and if you have seen the, uh, the video about editable meshes, fine, something will be, uh, will be uh, you will recognize again. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link it for you guys up there. Make sure you watch the edit mesh video because now we're going into the polygon level and uh, if, this is some, if this is new for you, make sure you check out that. So I'm uh, having an edit table mesh and I would like to adjust the mapping coordinates for every single side. Therefore you need a combination of two modifiers, not only the, uh, not only the the UVW map modifier but also another one. The other modifier and you select it and check out from the modifier list. Unfortunately you have to always click twice on the list that's new in Max. Um, go down and check uh, search for a modifier that is called uh, mesh select. Mesh select is a modifier that by itself does nothing. It only selects an object. So now the modifier is, pl is placed on it and it does nothing. And now it allows me to go, for example, into polygon level. It looks like an, an edit mesh modifier, but it's mesh select. And you select one side. Uh, by the way, if you don't like that the side will, gets red when you select it, you can use your F2 on the keyboard. And F2 switches between red selection and red only outline. I, I personally would like to leave it like this because it, uh, uh, it's, it cle it's clear which side is selected. So, and now with one side selected, so here it says mesh select and I'm inside the polygon mode. Don't go out. This is the only, way, uh, only time when you're not going out of the, uh, of the level. And now you add your UVW map modifier. Go down all the way and choose UVW map modifier. So, and now this UVW map, you can see it by the connection here, is only applied to this one face. Unfortunately, it, it, it's projected from planar from the top. We want to project it like from its front side and that is called normal align because this face here has face normals that point perpendicular to the plane. So you click at normal align and go with your mouse on it and move around a little bit. It's not changing a lot because it is still, see, uh, zero in one direction. Then you go out of normal align and hit fit. And now it fits this side. And now when you change the size, you can see it only changes on one side, on this one side that is selected. So let's uh, uh, adjust it so it looks like this. This is what I wanted. And when you're done, you click anywhere else. Let's do the same thing with the other uh, plane over here. Select it. Don't forget, don't go back to the mesh select because you need a new mesh select on top. So find another mesh select. LMS select. Then you go to the polygon level and pick a new polygon. This one. And now a new UVW map modifier. UVW map. Now it's only on this side. Normal align, click and move around and fit. And now you can adjust it to this side only. So let's do it like this. Here's the size. Let's, uh, so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't look good, but it doesn't matter. So just different sizes here. Now, the good thing is um, 
if this modifier stack is getting too annoying or you, it's confusing because you got three, four different modifiers, you can always select your object, right click, convert to edit table mesh. That means the modifier stack is collapsed, but it still looks the same. So it means you change the texture coordinates and now they are looking fine because they are in the geometry. So they are no longer handled by the modifier, they are in the geometry. And if you want to adjust it again to its default, for example, you can place another UVW on top, UVW map, and choose box, for example, and here it is. So this modifier only brings it back to the default, but if you turn it off, it is the way you adjusted it before with the mesh select and the UVW map for one side. Uh, if this is a little confusing, make sure you, re you remember mesh select was the modifier to pick a side and, um, and uh, UVW map to only adjust the coordinates for this one side. Okay, that's good. Let's delete the modifier here and do something else to the box. I would like to, here is my modifier, I would like to show you something else and for this uh, purpose I'm going to create quickly uh, three different standard mater materials, sorry. So here are three different standard materials. These three different materials I'm going to double click and change their color to so that they look different. So here is a uh, lime green one, here is a uh, light blue one and the third one would be a uh, light orange. So three different colors on my object and now what I would like to do is I would like to show you a method because now we are only able to apply one material to one object. So here's one material, one object selected. I hit assign to selection and now it turns green because this is the green object. If I now select the second one and apply it, then the green one is gone and the blue one is on all the objects. Now I would like to show you a method of how to apply more than one material to one object. And therefore we have one very specific material. It's not here under scan line, it's I guess here under general and it's called a multi sub object material multi sub object material you take it and pull it out and here it is it's a, a it's a material that allows you to gather 10 materials and place them all on one object in this case double click the the multi sub object material in this case i don't need 10 i just need three different materials you can set the number so click here on set number and then use three only so now the material is only three materials and now what you do is you set you take the material take the outgoing node of the material and link it to the ingoing of the multi sub object material so this is material number one that would be material number two and that would be material number three in order to make it uh, better visible i'm pulling those out a little bit. So those three, uh, you can adjust it so it's clear which one is which. So those three materials go in here and then this one will be applied. So now I select my object, I select my multi sub object material and I apply this three parts here onto one object. The question is which part gets applied to which face? And that looks a little bit of random. It's not random, it uh, has something to do with the box itself. But if you look at the material, the multi sub object material has three materials and they have all different IDs. So every one of those material has a material ID one, two or three. So now all we need to do is we need to give one, two, three. We need to select our object and it's an edit table mesh again and I can go into polygon level and select the face and whenever I select one face I can see here somewhere it says material ID and this face has material ID 1. The material IDs on the box are randomly distributed from 1 to 6 I guess. So 1, 2, 3, 5 and so on. So uh, now if I want to apply very specific materials all you need to do is select all sides. 
give them material ID 1, for example, now they all get material ID 1, only this one will be material ID 2, or this one will be material ID 3. So you just apply which material goes on to which side, and this in this way you can apply more than one material to more than one side. Of course, the texture coordinates have nothing to do with it, so when you, uh, when you for example, take one of the materials, uh, let's take material number three, and give it a texture, so here comes a map, I don't know which one it is, I think the bookshelf, link it to this, then of course, the bookshelf will be visible on one side because that is material number three which is placed here. So now if I select my my object again, also this side here and give it material ID three, then also here we will get some uh, bookshelf on it. Don't forget to get out of the polygon level. This is not a mesh select, you are not allowed to stay in there because that will result in some errors later on. Okay, so that's uh, it for the multi sub object material. Again, if you're not sure, please uh, check out the help file and see what all the what all things that can be done with a multi sub object material. The next thing is, uh, I would like to do a an example with you guys, and that is a totally uh, brand new scene. So I'm going to delete this one here. And to make it a little bit more complicated, what I'm going to do is I'm going for the worst case. And that is, I'm importing some geometry that has no texture coordinates. And that can simply be done by uh, importing some geometry, for example, from uh, SketchUp. Let Here's the guy, let's kick him out. What I want is, I'm going to create a little circle. It uh, doesn't care how big it is. And so, uh, what I would like to create a, a piece of log or a, a, a tree trunk. Uh, just a little cylinder and the file will be saved so file save as let's place it on my desktop call it untitled that's fine and there it is and here's my file import import from the desktop and untitled it is uh, there's I unclick textures but there is there are no textures on it uh, and it's uh, C pointing up that's good import so why is there a cylinder? I could much simpler go in here and create a cylinder like uh, this, a much better one actually. But what I wanted to do is show you a piece of geometry that has no texture coordinates. Actually, uh, it, is, uh, it is even, is it a group? No, it's not a group. It's just a name, named, uh, has uh, like these square brackets. Um, Here's my object. So now if I place a material on it and my material editor, here it is, let me uh, clean that up also. Uh, I'm going to create a scan line, a standard material. And in this case, I'm going to use two materials. I'm gonna use a standard material, which is the bark of the tree and a second one, which is, you know, the, well, the, uh, the, um, the wooden part where you see the rings on it. So um, here's my two materials. I need two uh, maps as well. So here are my, here's one bitmap that will, here I've brought the T rings. Here's a picture of some T, uh, some rings. Let's go this for number two. And here's my number one. And here's a piece of three par, uh, tree bark. I don't know how good it looks and how well it fits. So this is the first one. Let's call it bark. And the second one, uh, let's call, I don't know what it's called in English, the ring. Uh, let's link the pictures to it. The picture here and the picture there. And now I need a multi sub object material to, um, uh, to, co to connect two of them. So here is multi sub object material, double click it, set the number to two. Makes no sense to use uh, 10 when we only use uh, when we only need two. So here's materi material number one, the bark, and number two, the wood, the rings. Okay. So and this material now goes onto my cylinder. So cylinder selected, material selected, and apply. You can see that there is no texture coordinates on it because it actually um, 
it actually has only a couple pixels and it's really no, some noise on it. So let's fix the texture coordinates. Here is my object. And when you go to modify, it's an editable mesh. So we go for the, for the version where we use the mesh select first. So first we use a mesh select. Select this piece here and now give it a UVW map modifier. And in this case, I'm not using planar, but I'm using um, cylindrical because that wraps the bark around it. That's it. We don't have to do anything, only give it a new mesh select. Uh, mesh select. Now in the polygon mode, I select the top and the bottom here. Okay, good. Top and bottom. Use a UVW map while we are still in here. UVW map. This time I'm using planar and you can see it pla it's, pl uh, it's from the top down. That looks just perfect. Uh, to fix it all, I just make an editable mesh out of it. So why it shows some bark here that looks good or not good, we have to adjust it, but it doesn't show the rings up there. Why? Because the, uh, the te texture coordinates are not right. So, uh, sorry, the, the material ID. Material ID one is the bark. So I'm assuming when I go into the polygon level, all those are material ID one. Yes, they are. The top here is mat also material ID one. We have to make that two. Also the bottom here, material ID 2. And now it shows the rings that I have created. Now all we need to do is fix the bark a little bit. Here is my material, uh, my material, uh, the bark, my picture, double click. It's only using the picture once. So I'm, go I'm going to change the, see when I tile it here in U. So let's go for three times and I use the picture three times and also in the other direction, maybe two times. That's it. There is no bump map on it. Uh, you can also fake the bump a little bit because the wood has darker spots here and those darker spots would usually be pressed in. So what you can do is you can use the same picture. I know I told you bump maps are supposed to be black and white or grayscale images, but you can also use this one if you don't have a grayscale image and you can show you uh, the difference between without and with the bump map. So here is my, my log. This is with the bump map. It looks uh, much more like three dimensional. Let's make the bark a little bit stronger. So let's go for, let's go for 60. So here is the width bump map. You can see it's much more three dimensional. Uh, let me clone the image quickly. So then I have a cloned version and let's remove the bump map here and render it one more time. And here's the before and after with or without the bump map. The example with the bump map on the right side and without the bump map on the left. So it looks much more three dimensional. We could do the same thing uh, also with the rings here. So use both of them both as bump map and as uh, a diffuse color map. And then it just looks a little bit more three dimensional in the rendering. So see, this looks really uh, three dimensional now. Okay, so that was a simple example how to deal with material. I hope. It was not too much. It's already one hour that I was telling you some stuff, but it, there's a lot of things that uh, can be done with material, materials in 3ds Max. Here's a little uh, preview uh, about future videos. I'm also going to do uh, one or maybe two videos about materials for Arnold renderer. So there is a whole bunch of different materials with much more sophisticated uh, ways to deal with transparencies and you have some refraction in it as it so we can re create really realistic glass. Also reflections are much better done there. And I'm also going to show at least one more video about how to create what's called an unwrap material. So on these unwrap materials, you can uh, place, for example, all sides of a building on one texture, the roof, the sides and so on. And uh, then like use this unwrap texture onto your, on your geometry. Uh, it's a really nice thing that also is done in the, uh, in the gaming industry a lot uh, where they create uh, materials for uh, 
their objects. Okay, that's it for the materials. I hope you liked it. Leave me some comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's about time to do so. Okay, thanks guys and see you in the next video.